Sir, dear colleagues, I would like quickly to go through heart failure. L'insuffisance cardiaque est, est un très gros problème et Heart en Europe. Heart failure is a major problem in Europe, and in the Europe, the figures are uh, fairly horrendous. Puisque les nombres de patients présentant des insuffisances cardiaques se sont augmentés, les nombres de patients avec insuffisance cardiaque se sont augmentés dans les millions. 40% and 40 des patients présentant des insuffisances cardiaques se sont augmentés dans les millions. 40% des patients présentant des insuffisances cardiaques se sont augmentés dans les within one year after their first hospitalization. That clearly shows that heart failure is a very serious problem. In terms of heart failure, throughout my professional life, I've been working at Henri Mondor Hospital. For the past 40 years, we've been trying to find solutions to heart failure. We've tried to imagine new operating techniques for acute infarction, and we've tried also to use new technologies for a circulatory support. We were one of the first at the beginning of the 70s to use peripheral systems, membrane-based systems, and over time we've used complete artificial hearts, cardio-west, NovaCord. In fact, we proved for the first time in the world that a, a, a patient could live outside a hospital with a NovaCord type uh, device under very good uh, conditions and for many years more recently. We were amongst the pioneers in the use uh, of uh, ECMO. So, we have 40 years' experience. We have witnessed a huge change in the uh, situation, a major paradigm shift. Cardiac failure was a contraindication for surgery in the 70s, but now heart failure is an indication for a cardiac surgery. In fact, uh, uh, it's a... Uh, uh, Fair to say that uh, cardiac surgery can involve repair or replacement. In terms of uh, repair, I refer to the three R's. We can draw on the best points in cardiac surgery. First of all, revascularization. It's been shown that more uh, the lower the ejection fraction, the more severe the heart failure then uh, the higher the indication of for a, a surgery. If the F is low, you can do a cabbage. You have to do it meticulously, and it has to be as numerous as uh, required. The ejection fraction may improve. This has been proven now, and the main thing is to detect silent ischemic foci and try thus to better target your revascularization surgery. The second R is mitral valve repair. Mitral failure in a heart failure patient is a very serious marker of progression of the disease. If you repair the mitral valve when there's heart failure, it's possible to improve the actuarial survival curve and to achieve much more favorable figures. The improvement is about 40% in survival at five years. This is a very simple procedure. You just reduce the caliber of the mitral orifice. You downsize the mitral valve. It's the Bolling uh, procedure. This uh, procedure really works, and the latest recommendations of the European Cardiology Society show that uh, it's a class 1B uh, uh, proof. The third R is uh, LV restoration. In dilated heart failure, the LV looks like a football. The idea is to give it its initial form and make it look more like a rugby ball again. There's a second issue 
uh, scarring, for example, owing to infarction. You need to get rid of the scar tissue, which leads to abnormal movement. So ventricular remodeling will give rise to satisfactory results. At five years, the uh, survival rate is very satisfactory. Late, the latest publications in the New England Journal of Medicine last year clearly showed that this uh, was a very effective uh, procedure which should be recommended. You need to make the most of these procedures that are done every day in uh, heart patients, but you still have to adapt. It's absolutely necessary with these patients to have a, a, multi, a multifunctional team. You need to ensure that post-op care is of optimal quality, thanks to this uh, very very comprehensive team. You need to have a fully integrated unit. You need to have a multidisciplinary team at the patient's bedside. Of course, all this comprises certain limits. When a patient has gone beyond the indication for this intervention, or where the, when the procedure has been done, and you've gotten satisfactory results that don't last after five or ten years, then you have to resort to some other form of treatment. This is what we call replacement. Of course, a heart transplant is the gold standard. The results are spectacular now, and I'm not going to show you the results of a heart transplant in France, as published this year by the Biomedicine Agency. The two-year survival rate is 75%. You get really good survival rates uh, up to even 12 years. There's just one problem with heart transplant. We don't have enough donors. Here, the figures are quite impressive. Only 65% of patients who are listed for a transplant will be transplanted in the following year. 12% will die while waiting still uh, to get their uh, transplant. There are many reasons for this lack of uh, parts. There is an economic issue. Harvesting several organs is extremely costly, and very few hospital departments want to launch into these, this expenditure, which is sometimes viewed as superfluous. There may be ethical problems, too. Potential donors have to realize that uh, uh, they may soon die, and that's hard to uh, come to grips with. So I don't know how in the years to come we can drastically increase the number of uh, uh, donated organs that are available. If you look at the figures in France, despite uh, information campaigns to promote uh, organ uh, donation, the improvement is very slow. It stagnated at 350 or 400 last year, 171 transplants only could be made. That is uh, 2.1. There are 2.1 patients for each donor graft available. So what are all the uh, alternatives? Well, you have to try uh, to uh, gain time, because maybe in the future you'll be able to make a transplant. And Donc, who knows what the temps. future will hold. Gagner so you have to try and gain time for a couple of days uh, using ECMO, for example, or gain months or years uh, with more sophisticated devices. These uh, techniques, which enable you to save time, well, if the uh, time on the machine is long enough, then you may be able to avoid a transplant the treatment used is a true alternative to a transplant, perhaps. All these techniques are what we call ventricular assistance. It's very simple. You have a pump, and the pump pumps the blood in the left ventricle through a cannula, which is usually introduced in the apex or through a, 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 a cavity, and it's pushed back into the aorta 
through a long pipe, so to speak. The pipe doesn't, the heart doesn't have to do the mechanical work because it doesn't have to uh, uh, do anything. It's the pump that takes over. The results at the beginning were fairly poor. Here you can see the actuarial survival curves. Right at the bottom you have medical treatment. All the patients died uh, after 18 months. In the first curve, this is the situation about 10 years ago, but now look what is happening. Currently, in the upper curves, you can see the survival rate is acceptable, and above all, these rates are similar to uh, the rate uh, after a uh, heart transplant at two years. There's no difference in the survival between patients who got a donated organ and patients with uh, um, an LAD. This is huge progress. It was obtained thanks to 20 years' experience, and it's due to better selection of candidates, patients in other words, better patient management, but above all, better devices. When you look at what's happening today, you can see that there are over 50,000 patients in the world who have benefited from these techniques. As I speak to you, there are over 5,000 patients who have been using these pumps for over a year, and they live a normal life back at home. Um, most of these patients are in the U.S. In the U.S., there are 17 cases per million inhabitants, 19 cases rather, in Germany, 9 cases per million, and in France, under 2 per million inhabitants. So one can wonder why there is such a huge difference in access to these very effective treatments between the various countries. It's not just a problem of reimbursement. Maybe there are some ethical considerations. But these patients live a normal life. Here's one of my patients who was operated on at the age of uh, uh, 72. One year later, he is leading a normal life, uh, a normal life for a 73-year-old patient. He's uh, watering, his, he goes and waters his lettuces every day. And uh, the patient died finally at the age of 80. And that's a very a normal age. These VADs at the beginning were very big and bulky. I, this is the Novacord pump I used in 1993. They've become ever smaller, and now they're really tiny. So I think I'm justified in saying that small is really beautiful. A completely different strategy. Here we have an artificial heart. An artificial heart is the Holy Grail. It has been for about the past 40 years, Professor Carpentier convinced Lagardère to set up a joint ADS, venture with EADS uh, that makes uh, Airbuses. A lot of public funds were used, state funds. And he built a machine with two ventricles. You insert it like that, a, a heart graft. You replace the natural, the normal heart. The two ventricles. And it runs on electricity. Uh, the source of electricity is outside the body. So the patient is linked uh, to the uh, to a cable. The volume is 750 millimeters. The weight is 950 grams. Power consumption is uh, quite uh, high. 25 times greater than a VAD. So it's a really big pump, which is only suitable for a small number of patients. It's a really big system, and above all, it's a huge operation. So you can see in heart failure management there are two strategies. One falls on ever smaller pumps. There are a lot of clever things when it comes to pharmacology, surgery, and circulatory science. Then you have the uh, a big tank-like system where you remove the heart and replace it with a bulky prosthesis. Of course, uh, the future will tell. But uh, what we can note is that the feasibility study when it comes to using CARMAT, which was carried out in France over the last three years, 
Um, four patients. The four patients died, and what's uh, more disquieting is that two of the four patients died of problems linked to the functioning of the pump itself. So one can be a bit worried because the system is very complex and it's hard to keep control of these sophisticated technologies. But let's remain optimistic. The study which recently began uh, a new paramount uh, was implanted a few months ago, Alors, chers, uh, and we hope there will be more to come. Uh, so, dear uh, colleagues, dear friends, what's the uh, take-home message? It's very simple. Cardiac failure is not the, the end of life. Cardiac failure is a surgical problem. It's a new surgical problem. If the surgical problem is uh, properly uh, mastered, in an original way, without any uh, preconceived ideas, then it can lend new life to any number of patients. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Lozansi. I fully agree with you that uh, cardiac failure is a big challenge, not, or, uh, not in France or India, or, but it's a global problem. And we need to exhaust all other measures of the treatment, like even if it is medical management or insertion of the AICD or resynchronous therapy, before we embark upon the ultimate that is cardiac transplantation or the bad device. Of course, the donor shortage is always there. Hopefully, in future, maybe either we have got the artificial heart or with the help of stem cell technology, maybe we'll be able to grow the heart in a lab and then use it from patients on stem cells so that the problem of the immunosuppressants and rejection will not be there. Thank you. It was a very nice experience. And we have also embarked upon this uh, program of the heart transplantation as well as the bad therapy. May I have some questions from, from the floor, please? Any questions from the floor? Yes, Dr. Ambujra. While his mic works, uh, can I ask? Yeah, uh, I for the repair of the mic. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's a quite, it's a quite interesting approach. It's a percutaneous approach. It can be performed by the cardiologist. It's uh, extremely safe, and it actually permits to minimize the role of uh, mitral regurgitation in the course of the cardiac failure. So there is a, there is a room for this kind of innovation. So may I make a comment on, yeah. on your comment? Sometimes when I'm traveling in Asia, in China, or in India, I'm wondering about the need to develop a cardiac transplant program. I'm not sure that you need to invest in this, uh, in this in, uh, difficult In fact, problem. we are almost going to have the MOU on that also. That will be one of the subjects there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you skip, you skip one problem and you use the other techniques. That's right. Thank you. Professor, Mr. Vagas. Yeah, I just wanted to ask, uh, how do we uh, deal with the cost of uh, VED left ventricular assist device? Uh, and uh, in India, as I mentioned, that uh, cadaveric transplant program is not uh, as frequent as we would want. Over the last uh, 20 years or so, we have just performed at uh, All India Institute 50 cardiac transplants, which is too few and far. And the same situation exists in the rest of the country. Uh, that we, we are doing 50 to 60 cardiac transplant a year or even less than that. Uh, and left ventricular assist device is hugely expensive and it is out of reach of most patients actually. Now actually, uh, I'm sorry to say that uh, I have a different opinion. If you accept the concept of left ventricular assist and if you invest in new technologies, then you may end up with a very low cost system. Yeah. And the demonstration is being made now in China. In China, the Shenyang Art 
is a very low cost left on the current sys device and it's going to be available very soon for so the that's, uh, that's a good news very good news thank you Oui, moi je félicite Daniel Loisance de I'd like cette exposition démontre for parfaitement qu'on peut améliorer, augmenter la survie bien sûr au cas de la C'est un lovely study qui a été rapporté dans une récente session. It shows that uh, infarction patients and multiple cabbage can give them a much better life expectancy. I think indeed these small devices is a wonderful possibility for the future because the cost is much lower than a huge artificial heart.